Hello guys and welcome to Barcelibation, the channel where you can learn how to make a beautiful beautiful cocktails with very little money in your own place. So the drink that we are going to talk about today is actually a non-cocktail, it's the gin and tonic. So why am I calling it a non-cocktail? Well they say that normally in order to make a cocktail you need at least three ingredients. In this case we have only gin and tonic. But this drink has developed so much in the years that uh, I think it's worth it to have a look at it uh, also because uh, if you're gonna make a party and invite some friends over well uh, that's definitely an easy drink to make and it's very tasty if it's done well. Before to dive in what we're gonna do we're gonna break down uh, this drink. So we have a gin. Gin is nothing more than a distilled spirit which main flavor comes from uh, juniper berries. Now there is uh, several kinds of gin so we have a London Dry for example, we have a Old Tom, we have a bathtub, so they're all different styles. Today we're just gonna stick to Gordon, which is a London dry gin. And then we have tonic water, which is a soft drink created by the mix of uh, carbonated water and the quinine syrup. So now quinine, I will explain it better in another video, but it's basically a, a wooden bark. So that's what gives the flavor to tonic water. Next thing that we are gonna talk about is actually what glass to use for gin and tonic. There's not really a glass that it's better or worse, just the whole difference. So, so far what we have been using in the past years is always a Tom Collins. So how you can see, a top quality is just a, it's a tall glass and you can uh, fill it up of ice and uh, the good thing about that is that it just, uh, you can uh, really put a lot of tonic water in it if you like it soft and uh, the glass looks actually very beautiful as well. The only thing is when you try to drink, uh, obviously we, you will need of a straw uh, so uh, because it would be almost impossible to drink it without it's just gonna um, drop on your nose so I would just recommend to serve it like that. Another way which is my favorite to serve a gin and tonic is by using a balloon glass which is very similar to also I think a wine glass and what I like about this, uh, this kind of glass is that in this case you don't specially need a straw for it because ice has much more room to move so when you do that the ice just stays like this and it doesn't drop on your nose and also what happens is that your mouth and your nose they are both inside the glass in this case you could do it as well but you still need a straw to drink it so in this balloon what you do is like that so basically you can enjoy the full flavor of the gin and tonic because let's remember them at least i think at least 70% of uh, what we feel in our mouth when we eat, when we drink, it actually goes through our nose. If you like, you can also put a straw in this glass and it can work like that fine, but I don't think it's necessary in this case. So another thing that I want to talk about before to start our gin and tonic is the temperature that we serve our gin and tonic with. What do I mean by that? Well, consider that. So our ingredients and our glass, they are all at the room temperature when our ice is at least zero Celsius degrees. So when we put together something like, for example, a room temperature gin on ice, what happens? Very cold with the warm, they cannot try to balance. So what happens is ice start melting and your gin start getting watery. When we pour a room temperature tonic water, over ice, the CO2, so the, the bubbles that makes our tonic water so fizzy and nice, they kind of disappear because there is an unbalanced temperature between the two. This is one of the worst ways to serve a gin and tonic. So what do we have to do in order to avoid that? Very simple. You have a fridge, you have a freezer in your home and you buy a tonic water and you got some glasses and you have some ice, you can keep all of them in your fridge. So now what to keep in the fridge, what to keep in the freezer? Well obviously ice has to be in the freezer. Well I would say that a good gin because it's a spirit so it's not gonna freeze, you can keep it in the freezer. If you're in short of time, you can also put your tonic water in the freezer, just to make sure that it doesn't freeze. Your glass definitely can go in the freezer. What's gonna happen then, the, because everything is at the right uh, temperature, well, your gin and tonic is gonna taste much better, it's gonna stay colder, and you're gonna enjoy it much more. And don't forget, you can impress your guests. We're talking about your family, your friends, your girlfriend, maybe a date, maybe your future wife. So you just want the best for them. You don't want to give them something watery, something that it doesn't taste like a gin and tonic anymore, something that is not fizzy. So go for it, I'm gonna show you the best way. Let's dive in. 
the first thing that I want to show you is this beautiful glass. Kept in the freezer for about half an hour and look at the frost on this glass. It looks amazing. So we're gonna start our drink before that is gonna warm up, but look at the difference between these two. So regarding the ice, I just made some nice ice blocks. So you just need to buy a mold on Amazon. I'm gonna leave just a link below here. And uh, so you can make some uh, very nice clear ice at home. And remember, bigger the volume of the ice is and uh, slower your dilution will be. Let's start with the one block. Second block. And I guess that's all we can fit in this glass. Next step, we are going to pour our gin. So as we said, we got Gordon here, London Dry Gin, very classic gin, nothing too fancy about it, but it's been on the market for many years. Eight euros, perfect, I'm happy with that. And I'm sure my guess will be too. So let's open it and we pour uh, 50 milliliters. Remember, if you don't have a jigger, no problem at all. You can use a coffee cup or you can just free pour it. And voila. So, and now what we're gonna do, we're gonna pour our tonic water. And obviously I'm not gonna use this tonic water. I have some tonic water in my fridge, ready to be poured in my glass. There you go. So if you see, this tonic water is not making any foam because the CO2 is cold enough so it doesn't try to escape from the liquid. Uh, let's talk about how to garnish a gin and tonic. It's totally amazing like the way how they're trying to give something new on a customer's table and something fancy, colorful. I love that. Normally, uh, gin and tonic, we can serve it with a simple lime wedge, lime wheel, or just uh, maybe if we want to impress our guests, what we can do is just to give it a bit of a mix of uh, lime, grapefruit, choose what you like the most, and and as long as you enjoy your drink, this is gonna be for sure the best way out to serve it. So let's get our chopping board. I want to stir down a little bit my gin and tonic, let the ice go down. And because our uh, ice and the glass was already frozen, well, uh, we don't have to rush because our ice is melting. It is melting, but very slowly. We can take all our time in order to uh, work our garnish. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna get a nice grapefruit, just uh, zest it close to my glass, so all the oil that come out, they go straight on the rim of my glass. Just uh, twist it on the top of the drink, pass it all around the rim and don't forget also down here which is uh, the uh, stem where we take our glass so it's quite nice when uh, you can take our glass and then you know like somehow you get the flavors uh, from your hand I think it's a nice touch and people you know they trust you more when you do these things so why not so just uh, twist your beautiful uh, grapefruit zest put it inside your glass kitchen knife you can put it like that and uh, last touch just something different, a bit of rosemary. Even if it's a very nicely aromatic, what you do, do that, release a bit. And that smells much more. And then you have it. That's your gin and tonic. Okay, let's try this drink and let's see what it feels like. The smell is amazing. You really can smell the grapefruit in here. What is nice, uh, the tonic water and the gin, they also uh, come from. So it's uh, a light drink as we put the whole bottle of tonic water, but definitely very, very enjoyable. Put my glass, give it a nice smell. Ah. What I like is, first of all, very cold drink. The temperature is perfect. You can really taste everything through the palate and through the nose. It's so fizzy, so nice. You cannot imagine how many times it happens that people just boom pour the tonic water inside the glass and this foam comes out and boom, you lost all for the bubbles. This is a proper gin and tonic and I love it because I can take my time, I can talk to you as much as I want. So I'm not too worried about the ice melting. And also, I don't know if you can hear, but
just a nice little Amazing, beautiful, it's like an opera. Anyway, we are going to put this on aside. So now that I show you what's the best gin and tonic, I really want to show you what's the worst gin and tonic you can get in any bar or you can make at home. So first of all, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a, a Collins glass. Second of all, we are going to get a bag of ice like that. Now you're gonna ask, what's wrong with the ice? It's ice from the shop. Yes, that's true. And I'll show you straight away what's wrong with this ice. So if you notice, there are, yes, ice cubes, but there is a lot of crushed ice as well. So this is all water that is gonna melt in one second inside your drink by the time you pour gin on the top of it. And yes, if you want to make it worse, use your hands for this gin and tonic as well. Let's pour our gin, and because it's the worst gin and tonic, I'm gonna free pour. What I see is that all my ice cubes are getting, yes, clear and clear but at the same time that means that all the crushed ice that was on the top of the cubes just melted inside your gin it's already kind of getting very watery and that's exactly what we don't want then we are going to get our room temperature tonic water and pour it very fast inside our glass and let's see what happens and now we just pour it so these you can see the old bubbles they are completely gone. Now our ice is also kind of uh, melting uh, even more, so now it's floating in our glass. So you see, that's uh, one of the worst things that can happen to a gin tonic, because that means even if we fill up the glass completely of ice, it's already melting. And now let's uh, garnish it uh, as a, a simple uh, gin and tonic. Well, and there is something that I really, really don't understand is people doing this. I mean, what are you doing? Are you, are you waiting uh, for the gin to come up and mix it with the rest of the tonic water? Are you, I don't know, just trying to melt a bit more the ice? And uh, while we're talking, look at the ice. I mean, it's halfway, so already melted. So there is uh, only like a, a big glass of water with a bit of gin in it and a bit of tonic. The drink is totally flat. I don't feel gin at all. I feel a bit of uh, like a squeeze of lime. It's not even nice anymore. It's uh, just uh, very bitter. And uh, I feel like the, there is no flavor. It's just a glass of uh, very watery uh, tonic water. There are no bubbles anymore. If you like to pay 11 euros, if you're in London, for sure you pay at least 10 pounds for this. So how you can see here, we got the best gin and tonic and we have the worst gin and tonic. Let me know on the comments below what you think about that, if you have a different ways, if you have a better way. And talking about um, like a price for these uh, drinks, well, uh, I mean, we have a Gordon, which is a very classic gin, so it's not expensive at all. Actually, it costs something like about 8 euros uh, here, so it's a little bottle, so I, I think it's fair. Uh, tonic water, it costs about 1 euro 10, something like that, so very cheap anyway. Fruit, not even talking about that, we're talking about pennies here. Ice was totally homemade, no cost at all, and uh, better quality than a 2 euros uh, uh, bag of ice. We just had to buy some silicone trays that stay with you forever. Thank you very much again. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet. Click on the bell uh, to uh, get the notifications for the next videos that we're gonna post. And uh, cheers!